Alright guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Well today we're going to collect a Mercedes C-Class Estate that I bought from a YouTube viewer called Simon. Simon got in touch last week to see if I wanted to buy his late 2009 C250 CDI Sport Estate. It's black, it's automatic, it's done about 112,000 miles and I thought it was great stock, so I said yes. He explained that he'd agreed to sell this car to his friend for three and a half grand, but in the end his friend let him down and didn't end up buying it. Now I know I shouldn't, but I can't help it. Whenever somebody tells me a story like that, I can't help but have a wry smile on my face. That's because people are just full of, well, people, people just aren't true to the word. Do you know how many times over the years I've had people say to me, oh yeah, I'll have that, definitely. Don't sell it to anybody else, I'll definitely have that. Then they either don't get back in touch or completely ghost you. I've had it so many times. Trust me, until the money's firmly in your bank, you haven't sold anything. Anyway, I did some research on this particular C-Class and its trade value based on it being in average to fair condition was about two and a half grand. Plus then I had collection from the Midlands, which would be easily 250 quid. I explained this to Simon and said, look, I can't pay three and a half grand for it. That's its trade price. That's what it's going to cost to collect. You know, what's your bottom line? So he said, if you can pay me 2,700 pounds for it, I'll be quite happy. So I thought at 2,700 pounds, it just sounds like great value. Now I haven't actually seen it yet, but it has been collected and it's been dropped off for me on my car park. All I've seen of it so far are photographs, and I know from the photographs, it desperately needs the wheels refurbing. They're all corroded. But apart from that, the condition of the rest of it looks pretty good. So I'm fairly certain there's some profit here for me. He explained to me as well that it only has part service history, so I think it has four or five or six Mercedes services, and then he's done one recently. But there is a little bit of a gap in the service history right in the middle. So I think what I'll do is run it over to SPR for a full engine and gearbox service, and then I'll take it to Prestige Wheels and get the wheels refurbished. Then it'll probably want a fresh set of reg plates, a good buff, and a good clean. And then I'm thinking it could be a £5,000 car. Before I agreed to buy this, I checked it out using Car Vertical just to make sure it had never been written off, stolen, had a mileage rollback, or had outstanding finance on it. It's really easy to do. All you do is go to carvertical.com, type in the vehicle reg. In this case, it is Sierra Yankee 59 Alpha Victor Alpha, and then pay for the check. And this checks hundreds of millions of cars across dozens of countries' databases. If you want to do one of these checks for yourself, by the way, and I urge you to do so before you hand over any cash for a used car or motorbike, then use my promo code HIGHPEAK for 10% off. Alternatively, click the link below in the video description. As you can see with this one, though, it all checked out fine. There are a couple of advisory items on the last MOT for things like child seat in position, all that sort of nonsense. So I'm guessing it's been to a Halfords or a Quick Fit. You know, somewhere where the MOT test has got a city in gills in being a job's worth. Anyway, let's go and have a look, shall we? Well, we're here, and it looks quite nice, that. Such a lot of car for £2,700. If you didn't know anything about anything, you know, if you didn't know anything about the used car price in the UK, that looks like a 10 grand car. Simon was right, though. It does need the wheels refurbishing. Oh, by the way, that's my M4. Bit of a long story, this, but I recently set up a new channel with some mates of mine, so check it out. We've basically bought several written-off cars, and then we've done loads of videos about putting them back together again. So check it out. It's called Transformotion Vehicle Rebuilds. Anyway, back to this C-Class. There's a little dent near the passenger door, but I'm pretty sure the lads at Dents would get that out. It does need a good buff. There's a little bit of damage to the lower front sill, uh, or not sill, uh, valance. The skirt thing around the bottom of the bed. It does need some new number plates as well. Looks pretty good though, that, doesn't it? I think it suits it in black as well. It does look quite sporty. I quite like the fact it's got privacy glass as well. It just sort of works well in black. All blacked out. All black everything. So far then, I'm quite pleased with that. Right, let's walk around it. Let's get the keys out. Look at all these keys I've got here. Right, which one is it? Uh, that one, that one. There we go. We've got two keys, which is always a good start. But yeah, not a bad looking car, is it? In fact, it's very tidy. Does need the wheels refurbishing though. Look at the state of those. I'll also order some new sensor caps. They always corrode. This is definitely a job for prestige wheels because these need to be stripped and dipped and then powder coated probably twice might need new brake discs as well they're a little bit little bit rusty there's a little bit of a lip on them the back mm, back of the same actually yeah that once it's had its wheels refurbished should look really good that tire looks pretty good as well it's on about six mil of tread and it is a 
Is it a new brand I've never heard of? Can't even see a brand on this one. A y Is that the brand? Y Yat One or Yatone? Never, literally never heard of that. What's the front one? That again's on about five mil, that's pretty good. Is that another, no, uh, this is a Cap, Captara. Nope. Gr Gru, Grimax. Another new one on me, that. There's a little bit of paint missing off that toe eye cover there. We've got a broken fog lamp there. It does need some new plates. There are lots of little marks over it, but I think they would buff out. The person behind me is having a phone call that they want the whole world to hear, I think. How loud are some people? Uh, we've got a matching grim axe on the front, so we've got the same tyres on the front axle. Is this another? Looks the same as the other side. Yeah, a Yatone or a Yat one, I've got no idea. No idea. Oh, look at the state of this wheel. Nasty, isn't it, that? Nasty. Ah, a little bit of a scuff there. I think, though, on a car of this age and miles, I think I could buff around that and then touch it in carefully. A couple of little marks here where people have opened the door into it, but I think they should buff out. Some little kitty fingerprints there. That was the dent that I was telling you about. It's not even broken the paint, actually. That'll come off. If I can get the lads from Dents to come out with the little rods and pop that out, I'll look quite tidy. It's got the nice, nice roof bars on it as well. That's quite good, doesn't it? It's a little bit hearsy, isn't it, in black? Yeah, and we've got a crack there on the rear light lens. I'll have to have a look on eBay and see if I can find a replacement. I expect brand new, that's probably £250, but maybe I can get one on eBay for 50 Now I've just noticed another little dent there. Yeah, I'll have to call dents. Quite pleased with that though. One of the keys doesn't work. Hmm, could just be a battery. The paintwork does look quite dull, but I'm convinced it will clean up. All these little marks here, people's fingernail marks, they will come out, I'm sure. Power folding mirrors. Well, it's quite a good spec, this. So we've got four electric windows, powerful mirrors. Ah, remote tailgate as well. No. Nope. Oh, there we go. We have lift off. That's quite a good option, one of these, I think. A couple of little scuffs here around the back, but again, I can touch those in. That definitely needs a new light lens. Definitely. In the back, we've got some marks on the seats where a kiddie seat's been. They are ice fix points as well. Just needs a very good valet, this, really. If we can get the valeters to lift up the rear seats, how elaborate is that? And again, oh yes, this is cup holder porn, isn't it? Yeah, if I can get the valeters to lift out these, the rear seat bases and clean out all the sweeties and McDonald's fries and all that stuff, should clean up quite nicely. I think this might be proper leather then, because if it wasn't, there's no way that wouldn't be ripped. Mercedes do what's called Artico or Artico, which is like leather air, it's like vinyl, and it always seems to rip. But that doesn't, so I suspect that's proper leather. I do need to get a garden around here, don't I? So we've got the parcel shelf, that's good. How do I... There we go. Operator error there. Yeah, it just needs a good clean, this, doesn't it? It's all quite nice. We've even got a dog guard there. Like on a Range Rover. Very handy. This would make a very good family car, this, wouldn't it? It's obviously what it's been used for, but I'd much rather have it than a cash guy. 
be rear wheel drive and at least it'll drive well. Certainly better than a cash guy. Now we're looking for rust. Hmm, there isn't any. Very good. Right. Let's have a look under the bonnet. I think Mercedes call this obsidian black. Well, as is often the case with modern cars, there's not an awful lot to see here, is there? There's no rust though on the top mounts there. Again, just needs a good clean. It's all quite, quite honest and original, isn't it? No obvious leaks of any kind. No signs of accident damage. Chassis legs are all fine. Very good. Very good. And the struts still work. So then, we've got automatic lights, we've got electric seats, ah, heated seats as well. We've got a button cover missing there, or a blank, you know, blank switch thing missing. Quite nice, isn't it? I quite like this wood trim. Cup holders, what have we got under here? Yeah, this one's a clean. 12 volt charger there for something. Very good. Right, let's fire up. We've done 112,000 miles. My engine light comes on, that's good, so no one's, no one's wired it out. What station's he been Time listening to? Travel, his Nikki, thank you very much. We've Radio 2, I would say. There we go. Nice and sensible. Now these 2.1 litre diesel engines are very noisy. Listen to this. Very agricultural, aren't they? They are quite reliable. Now, in terms of service history, I've got that on email. So, I don't expect to see anything in here, really. As of, I think, 2008, Mercedes went digital with their digital uh, service record, so there's no, no service books. So if you contact your local Mercedes dealer, they will email it across for you. He also said that there was another service receipt for Right, it's had two new suspension springs, coil springs, a recall was carried out for the driver and front passenger airbag. Okay, very good. And yeah, that's the current MOT, so it was done at 112,000 miles, so not long ago at all, and it's good until next July. The advised, trial seat fitted, not allowing full inspection of adult belt, near side rear. What a job's worth. And the same for the offside rear. And also, suspension arm ball joint has slight play offside front. Well, that should be evident in the test drive, shouldn't it? I'm expecting it to be a little bit knocky. Right, well, this, I think, is worth every penny of £2,700. What else? Oh, look at this. Car got even cheaper, didn't it? That, I think, is the token for a petrol station vacuum cleaner or one of those air machines. We've got some nail clippers there out of a Christmas cracker, I think. I'll tell you what. Shopping trolley tokens, all sorts. What a result. Does my air conditioning work? That's a big one. Give it a minute. Ah, we've got front parking sensors, because that's my display. And the rear display is up there on the rear headlining. Quite clean this, isn't it? In fact, very clean. Quite impressed with this. Hmm, perhaps we could do with a new pollen filter, because it smells a little bit, but it does work. That is getting nice and cool. Ah, we've got paddles as well. Just spotted those. Right, should we take this for a drive then? See how it performs. Make sure it doesn't smoke too heavy under acceleration, all that sort of stuff. Better turn that aircon down, it works a little bit too well. I suspect this has never had a gearbox service either because only weirdos like me get that done. So I shall get that done along with a full engine service, change the pollen filter, get the wheels refurbished. That feels quite solid over the bumps. 
spoke too soon there. A little bit of a knock. Yeah, they're very grumbly, those engines, aren't they? They tend to be even more audible on the cheaper cars, like the C-Class, where I think they don't use as much sound insulation. They are very reliable, though, usually. Yeah, so far, so good. Electric seats work. There we go. Very good. Do my windows work? Yeah? It's a decent car, this is somebody, isn't it? I'd happily run around in this, actually. Let's test the old heated seats. I don't think we've got Bluetooth audio, though. I think it's just radio or compact disc. Whatever one of those is. Hmm, pulls all right. It's quite smooth. I'm very impressed with this, you know. Thank you, Simon, for getting in touch. I think by pure fluke, I've got a decent car here. Now, I haven't really researched this, but I was just guessing off the top of my head that this is probably a £5,000 car retail. So if it owes me around £3,000 delivered, the wheel refurb is going to cost me about two ninety dollars to get them powder-coated. That takes my total to three three. A new light lens, perhaps 50 or 60 quid. An engine and gearbox service at SPR, that's going to be... Hmm, I'm not sure. How much was the last one? About 400 quid, I think. Straight away, they're up to 3750 plus a buff, plus a valet. We're talking about four grand, so before you know it, your profit margin does dwindle, doesn't it? Still, as long as I don't unearth any more faults, there should be a good thousand pounds profit in this. And that isn't to be sniffed at, is it, in these trying times? My seat works. Oh, I've just noticed it's got a quarter of a tank of diesel as well. I know it's something minor, this, but I hate to get in a car that's either been traded in, and I don't do it when I'm selling a car either. I always try and make sure there's some fuel in it. I pick up that many cars from main dealers which have been traded in that are running on absolute fumes and I just think if you're that cheap that you're trying to use every last penny out of the fuel tank, you probably haven't changed the brake fluid. Anyway, that might just be more judgmental nonsense from me, but, but I don't think it is. I think it's indicative of the previous owner and how they've looked after it. Right, well, I'm going to head straight over to SPR, then I drop this off for an engine gearbox service and then crack on with the rest of the work. I'll also call Prestige Wheels over in Bradbury and get this booked in. Right, I shall see you then in... Hmm, how long is this going to take me? Should be quite a quick turnaround, this, because there isn't an awful lot to do. Uh, give me two weeks. Give me a fortnight. Well, we're back, and as you can probably tell, I'm not in the Mercedes estate. And there is a perfectly good explanation for that. I've been away from my desk now for about a fortnight. The first week I spent in Spain on holiday, then when I got back, I had a couple of days filming down south, and then a couple of days tying up some loose ends, and then, finally, I got back to my desk on Friday. And it turns out the black C-Class Mercedes SY59 AVA sold in my absence. It's annoying when this happens because I didn't even have a chance to finish the video. Anyway, it sold for 5995 Now, if you remember, I paid just £2,700 for the car. So straight away, I'm thinking there's £3,300 profit. Not so fast. Not so fast. There would be a nice, healthy, fat £3,300 profit in this car had I not massively overspent on it. And I mean massively overspent on it. Oh dear. What I'm going to do now then is talk you through what happened, talk you through what I spent, and then try and figure out if there's any profit left. I don't think there is, to be honest. Don't think there is. After we last spoke then, I took the car down to SPR, who are a Mercedes specialist over in Stockport, and I always use them for Mercedes, they're really good. I asked them to do a full engine service and a gearbox service, and just a general check over and see what it needed. But when I was on my way there, a fault developed. I hadn't realised this, but when you were going up a hill, you know, when you were putting the engine under excessive load, there was a load of vibration coming from this central area. So I thought, oh no, this is my gearbox. My torque converter's on its way out. There goes my profit down the drain. So when I arrived at SPR, I said, can you just check that out for me and see what it is? Now that horrible vibration turned out to be the gearbox mounts themselves. They were completely shot, as were the engine mounts. If you can picture this, they're like solid poly bushes, and they were completely worn out, so it was allowing everything to just vibrate and shake. I had those replaced, and that wasn't cheap. They also did the full engine service, they replaced the fuel filter because that hadn't been done for a while, and they also replaced the pollen filter. And they also ran through some sort of odour eliminator thing, because if you remember, the air conditioning was quite, quite whiffy, quite smelly. Then they called to say the brake lines were quite badly corroded. In fact, they said, don't go too far in this because they might burst at any time. So I thought, that's really strange, because it only passed its MOT, like, two months previously. Granted, it was at a quick fit or a Halfords or something, but there was absolutely no mention of these brake lines. It turns out that the brake lines are all concealed by these plastic covers, so you just can't tell. And it's quite a common issue with this era of Mercedes. 
and that's why this wasn't picked up on the previous MOT. So if you do have an older Mercedes of this generation, check them out, because if they burst, it could be, could be quite dangerous for you. Now, unfortunately, SPR were quite busy, so they couldn't do the job for a few weeks. So I picked it up from there and ran it back to my local garage and asked them to do it for me. In case you're wondering, my bill at SPR was £1,313.64. So that straight away did knock the wind out my sails a little bit. Then when it was back down at my local garage, I asked them to fit a new rear light. Remember how the old one was cracked? Well, I found one on eBay for £70. So I asked them to fit that, which, to be fair, I could have done myself, but it was there for other works, so I thought they may as well do it for me. And if you remember, it had a button missing from the dashboard here. So I called Mercedes thinking they'll just be able to sell me a blank switch, won't they, for 30 pence? Nope. This is Mercedes after all, isn't it? They wanted £130 for the complete switch set. So I thought, no, I'm not doing that. So back to eBay, and I found one for £29. A mechanic fitted that for me, and it was as good as new. Then I picked it up from there and took it over to Prestige Wheels in Bradbury, who refurbished the wheels for me. If you remember, they were quite badly corroded, and I just knew that if I rubbed them down and painted them, they'd just look a mess. I knew these had to be stripped properly and then powder coated. And that's exactly what happened. But this is the car that keeps on giving, isn't it? Giving problems, that is. It wasn't plain sailing. It turns out the locking wheel nut key, or whatever you call it, had corroded, so they couldn't get the locking wheel nuts off. So they had to call out somebody who charged me £15 a wheel to get all the nuts off. So the cost there for the wheel refurbs were £288 plus £60. In between all this, I ordered two new reg plates because the old ones were a bit faded and a bit dull. My colleague kindly fitted them for me, and again, in my absence, I asked him to pick it up for me and take it over to Thameside Valentin for a full detail clean. Now, at this sort of time, I was sat in Spain with my laptop doing all my adverts, trying to get everything organised for when I come back. So I advertised the Mercedes at 5995, but without any photographs. And things never sell without pictures. You always get people emailing straight away, oh, can I have any pictures? Yes, you can do, but there aren't any. Otherwise, if there were pictures, they'd be on there. All right, Hyacinth, I can see the car in front. But on this occasion, as luck would have it, this did sell without any photographs. We got a phone call, and then it had just arrived back from the Valeters, and the guy bought it, paid me, and took it. While I was away, I was checking my bank probably, probably 40 or 50 times a day. I'm trying to complete on a house very soon, and I need every last penny, and just keep waiting for bits of money to arrive. Anyway, I was checking my bank and sure enough, 5995 came in with the reference SY59AVA. I thought, I know that wretch. And then I thought, uh, it's the Mercedes, isn't it? Which I haven't finished the video with. I suppose it's better to take the deal on a day rather than say, oh, excuse me, could you come back in a week once Matt's finished filming with it? No one wants to do that, do they? So I suppose what I'll do now then, I'll park up somewhere scenic, I'll go through my costs and work out if there's any profit left. I'm not particularly confident about this one, I think I paid 27 for the car, 300 in transport, 13 at SPR, 300 not on wheels. If I've made 500 pounds at the end of this, I think I'll count myself quite lucky. Right, well here we'll do then. This is scenic as anywhere, isn't it? I paid 2,700 pounds for the car, 300 pounds in transport, that's 3,000 pounds, quick maths. £70 for the new rear light, £30 for the button on the dash, that's £3,100. £15 on some new reg plates, 1313 and 64 at SPR. £288 for the wheels, plus 60 to get the locker wheel nuts removed. We've got £54 to fit the rear lamp and the dash buttons. The brake pipes and ends and fluid and labour came to £231. So my grand total for this cheap Mercedes was £5,131.64. So I've got 5995 for the car, less 5131. Leaves me with a profit of, that's not bad actually, £864. 864, that's pre-tax, pre-VAT. But there will be some VAT to claim back on these bills. That's a question I'm often asked actually. Why do you work out the cost without the VAT and blah blah? Well, some of the tradespeople I use aren't VAT registered, so obviously I can't claim VAT back on those because there isn't any, but a lot are. So, for example, on the 1313 from SPR, there is £218.94 of VAT to claim back. So in a roundabout way, it does kind of offset my VAT margin. So anyway, around £864 profit. Mm, it's not bad, I suppose, is it? It's not great, could have been better. 
Well, I think that's about it. My apologies, by the way, for having another video kind of unfinished where I can't show you the finished article. But according to my colleague, it did look nice when it was all done. So, there's another one turned around. Thank you for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. And yeah, cheers guys. See you next time.